Isn't this bridge so beautiful? This is amazing. Like this, just this right here, this view, so good. I can't get over. It. I took a picture of it, a time lapse of it. Uh, it's so exciting, guys. Welcome back to the Johnny Q channel. Thanks so much for watching. Three things you should know about me. I love food, I love being on camera, and I love drones, specifically drone photography, and that's what this video is about, drone photography and how to get really good at it. Let's do it. Honestly, this is such a beautiful spot. Like, I can't get over it. I hope you guys can hear me with the sound of the stream still in the background. What you'll need to have a successful drone photography session, obviously, is a drone and your phone. Uh, for those wondering what this case is for the drone, it's not, doesn't come with the drone. Uh, I got this from Low Pro uh, when I got one of their Low Pro tactical bags. So, it fits perfect. It's kind of awesome that actually that it worked out. I always have this case on it. This little protector kind of dome thing. So it protects the lens and also the housing for the drone. And then this little, little thing that holds it in place, I keep that as well. I wanna keep my stuff, you know, safe and clean. Which is gonna go up and you're just like This is so awesome. So in order for you to have successful drone photography, uh, I do a few things, okay? I don't like to shoot right at like noon or any time between 11 and 2 to 3. Only because the sun is so harsh, I shoot between 4 and 7 p.m. It is 4.45 and the sun is just setting. Sundown will be around, I believe, 7.30, 7.45, somewhere in that area. And I found that when I fly my drone within that time frame, it really gives me that golden hour, like awesome look. Another step that I would totally encourage you to do and totally go out and get, I paid with my own money to get these filters, but the Polar Pro filters for the drone are essential. Essentially using these Polar Pro neutral density filters for your drone, just like you would on a camera, it actually gives you more dynamic range to work with in post when you edit. I'm using, I believe, the Polar Pro ND16. There's eight, 16, and 32. The battery is full. I got an SD card in there. I am, I am ready to go, guys. I am pumped, pumped. Okay, so what I'll do is turn this on. Before I even start flying my drone, this is what I like to do. I like to actually set it up before I take off. So what I'll do is I'll go to manual mode and then I'll usually go, I'm in 24 frames a second. I usually film in 24 and not 60 just because I like the more kind of cinematic look and kind of creamy overall goodness to the look. So I'll go 50, between like 60, 80, or 100. Depending on how harsh the lighting is, I'll bump that up. But I want ISO at 100 because I'm outside, obviously. Uh, let's go, let's go 60. That that usually yields like the best result. So then I will start recording, and then I will take off. Take off. Ooh. The home point has been updated. Please let's bring check you over it here. Whoa. And already I had to bump that shutter speed up to 180th, one over 80. And so what I like to do is this. Let me show you. You see how the hills and valleys just kind of have that overall golden look? Like that's what I want. So I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna go over to my camera option and already like that looks stellar. To me, that's, yeah, that's well lit. That's properly exposed. I have lots in focus. And that's usually what I like to go after. Just kind of that look because I can do a lot of post editing in in post. When it comes to drone photography, I usually say the higher the better. Only because you don't want just landscape like this deep and far, right? Which really, it, it has to, the sun and the golden hour at this time really uh, over exaggerates the details and features of something like the hills and valleys here. And I think that's what I want, so I'll go ahead and take a picture of it. I'll snap a pic. All right, I'm gonna fly somewhere else because why not, right? I really wanna go over here. There's like a spot that I've been wanting to go after. It's got like, Kind of the same scenery but it's got a farmhouse on there and i'm just pumped about that like that's what i want do you see what i mean like it's not just 
far, it's not just a wide landscape, it's also far and deep. Like you see all the trees, you see the grass, you see the roads, you see that farmhouse. All there is left to do is go back home, download this footage, open it up in Lightroom, and start editing. Really guys, that's all that needs to be done with drone photography. Uh, it's really that simple. There's no like hack to it. It's just getting your drone, going out there, flying it. Make sure you have an ND filter. Make sure you, know, you get really solid landscape, both uh, wide and far and deep for texture and for just dynamic range overall. That's what's gonna help you the most. So can I just say that I feel bad for uh, the people in Canada. In order for them to fly drones legally, they have to take a test. That is crazy to me. And if you get caught without the permit or without taking that test and you're flying your drone, that's $6,000. And then it's like even more if you're a corporation or business. That's mind boggling. So for those people in uh, Canada who can't fly the drones, I feel sorry for you. Come over to the States. We'll happily welcome you on your drone flying. Okay, ladies and gents, I hope that kind of helped you and it kind of gave you a glimpse into my world of drone photography. If you want to see more photos, go to my Instagram. It's at JohnnyQ underscore underscore underscore. You'll see all the drone photos that I've taken and I hope you like them. I really do because I like them and that's why I post them so you guys can like them too. That's why I made this video and I make these videos because I like it, hoping that you guys will like it.